those ideas. Now the thing is, today we have a modern conception of what speed and velocity. We see velocity as a rate. Velocity is a rate. We see it as the coverage of distance over time. And we even use these terms in everyday life, like miles per hour. Uh, you can understand that miles is for distance and hours is for time, or meters per second, and for some reason, feet per second. I don't know what most people don't use the metric system, hint, hint, America, uh, but hey, so th this still exists. But anyway, you can see the format, distance over time. So if you don't get the memo, now you do. So anyway, you can see that velocity is this coverage of distance over time. This is the measure of motion. But the thing is, uh, you uh, sometimes see like speed limits with this number on it. But the thing is, there were no speed limits uh, when Aristotle was taught. So what did Aristotle think? Well, his ideas were very different, especially because big signs with numbers and units on them didn't exist. And first of all, Aristotle thought of some, well, some weird ideas, to be honest. His first idea was the idea of natural place. We'll be saying that in that voice for a lot of times this episode, like four or five. So be prepared. But anyway... Natural place to this guy was because he saw that every single material, every single object was made of rock, also called earth, water, air, and fight. Now the thing is, he thought that all of these things had their natural places in the world. I don't know how, I don't know why, but they did. Rock was kind of like the earth. It was like this. He didn't know that the earth was a sphere, so sorry to all you flat earthers. Then he saw Water, because water always splashed on top of the earth, right? And then, after that, there was always air flowing around us. And then, fire. I guess it kind of explains why fire raises up, he said, or why there's a big hot sun in the sky. But, um, he thought that this was the order everything goes. And so, he thought, that this was the reason why when he took a rock, so let's say you have Aristotle over here, that the reason it fell down wasn't gravity, but rather it was their natural place. And, but um, it makes you think why he couldn't just test maybe dropping a cup of water down. But the thing was, the people in Greece, for some reason, actually liked, uh, didn't uh, like experimentalism. They thought of the arguments more than the evidence, which is a bad th uh, way to think when you're in science. It helped them in math, but it definitely wouldn't help them in science. All right, so that's the idea of natural place. But let's go to another of his ideas. That is called impetus. Impetus. Now, what is impetus? I don't even know what that means. Is it like a Greek word or something? Type, type, type. I'm going to have to use it when I actually have a phone on me. But the thing is, impetus was like to Aristotle the energy that an object had. When you push or exert a force on something, it was given impetus. It was given this impetus, this energy. And the thing is, that's kind of sort of reasonable. 
But the very unreasonable thing about this is, he thought when you threw a rock, kind of like this, it had this impetus, so it would go in like this parabolic shape, and then it lost all of its impetus right at this moment. If it loses all its impetus right at this moment, that's why it slows down until it just loses all of its energy. Drops right down to the ground. Beautiful. Wonderful, as they say in the Indian music videos. Amazing. What, what, who was that woman who said that? But anyway, uh, this definitely isn't right. What would actually happen is this rock would uh, be thrown. It would slow down over time, but that's not because of energy. That's because of the constant pull of gravity over the force, uh, the energy you gave. Then that energy goes away. Then gravity pulls it down to the ground in some what of a parabolic form. So this definitely is bad. All right. So now you have another one of his ideas. Ideas about motion and force. All right, so what is motion and force? Well, in Aristotle's mind, you needed force to keep an object moving. Yes, Aristotle's reasonable ideas do exist. And this was one of them. And every single object needed a force to keep them moving. Now, the thing was, this was because probably in Greece they had a lot of friction on the earth. I don't know where they have it in Greece, but probably where Aristotle lived. You didn't never know. But the thing is, if you eliminated all that friction, then just one push and that object would slide like butter, but forever. So the thing is, this is a wrong theory. It's just because of, it's kind of wrong. Not really, you can say it's, I don't know how to describe it, because if the friction is on, then the thing is, this actually kind of sort of works. But the thing is, friction is the one doing this. But he thought no matter what happens, screw that friction crap, no matter what the friction is, this must always need a force. However, that was was wrong. So, uh, you can kind of not put a check mark on there. You see this? Wait a second, where do I see the check mark? Oh goodness, make it an X mark. All right, so now, the final of his ideas that we will go over. Wait, uh, first of all, I want to show you one of the side effects of his theory. He, he thought that when an arrow was moving, uh, let's just draw those thingies on the back that you have. He thought that where when an arrow exited its bow, so you know, like those th things that happen when you do the bow. And so when you throw that arrow, then the arrow would make way due to the arrow head. And so and the air would make all the way to the back and then for some reason they'd start going forward again and right conveniently at the back of the arrow and push the arrow because he thought that it always required a force to keep moving oh my god anyway um yeah that's a side effect now, the last of his theories that we will be looking at is his theory of geocentrism. Oh, God, how long has this gone on? Like it's been 3,600 years and you still haven't settled it? God, okay. So, anyway, uh, it hasn't actually been 3,600 years. It's only been about like 2,000 years. But still, settle it already. Actually, it's been about 2,200 years. All right, so, wait, it's actually been 2,221 years. Okay, okay, uh, I won't torture you with that anymore. Anyway, 
let's look at his final idea. And this idea stated that, his idea, the final idea stated that the earth was at the center of everything. Now, this seems kind of reasonable, as the sun would uh, appear to spin around the earth, sunrise and sunset, and so would the moon and the stars. They would all seem to orbit around the earth, but the thing was, the earth was actually orbiting around them. However, if Aristotle was in the earth's reference frame, he'd technically be right, since the earth wasn't moving. But, anyways... The Earth was actually found to have been moving around the sun by Galileo. So this theory, big fat X mark. So, anyways, all of his ideas were debatable. And so, the thing is, we don't exactly see his ideas as completely valid. But he did set the stepping stones and cornerstones for many future physicists to evolve all his ideas to the great uh, theories of kinematics that we know today. Subscribe to Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science, especially programming.